Welcome to Politically Unstable with Charles Hurd, Washington Times Opinion Editor. I'm your host, Andy Parks, and I'd like to remind you that you qualify for a 50% discount on an annual digital subscription to the Washington Times. And all you have to do is go to WashingtonTimes.com slash Andy. That's WashingtonTimes.com slash A-N-D-Y. And now here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Washington Times Opinion Editor, Charlie Hurt. Hello, Charlie. Happy Thanksgiving, Andy. How are you? Happy Thanksgiving to you. Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself against lawless vigilantes. That's the title of your latest column. You start with the question, is the media evil or stupid? Is it possible they're both? The uh, general consensus has come out that without a doubt, it's definitely both. I was trying to get to one or the other answer, but obviously that's not necessarily possible where, where the answer is so obvious that, it, that it's definitely both. I mean, think about this, for example. You know, these people, they, they keep calling Kyle Rittenhouse a vigilante. That's the one thing he's not. And of course, for two years now, these people have been haranguing us and lecturing us about the evils of vigilantism, while at the same time, celebrating the rioters and the looters and the murderers who are out with the BLM protests. Go back and look at the definition of vigilantism. Vigilantism is not shooting somebody who is attacking you. That's called self-defense. Vigilantism is when you try to exact your own kind of rough, illegal justice against someone because something has happened to you that you're unhappy with, such as your lot in life. You're mad because you don't have all the Le Vuitton handbags that you want. So what do you do? You go smash into a store, you break it, all in the name of BLM, by the way. Mm -hmm. You break into the store and you steal a bunch of Louis Vuitton handbags. That's vigilante justice, right? Yep. Defending yourself is not vigilante justice. Yep. So did the Rittenhouse case really expose the media for what they are? I really do think that something kind of broke here. And there have been other examples. I'm not thinking of them right now, but I, I know that over the last couple of months, and there have been a couple of other examples where things break. And the media loves to talk about how the country is divided. And I always get a little annoyed by that because, yeah, it's sort of divided. But actually, are you really divided when the only problem is that half of the people are believing a bunch of lies they're being told. That's not really being divided. That's being lied to. You know what I mean? Every now and then something happens where I really do believe that a chunk of, of those people who are being lied to sort of wakes up and says, oh, wait a minute. These people are lying about everything at every turn. And the Kyle Rittenhouse case is a perfect example of that where people said, and, and the jury spoke for, I think, a lot of people, the uh, people saw after being told everything that they'd been told about this guy, and even from people like respected people in our system, such as the prosecutors prosecuting the case, you realize they lied, they made up charges against the guy, they tried to prejudice the jury, knowingly inserting stuff into the trial. The judge didn't even have to tell you not to insert this stuff. You know, it's something you learn in law school. You're not allowed to malign somebody for pleading the fifth. And then, oh, by the way, are you surprised that an innocent person would plead the fifth when they're up against jackals like this? The threads come apart. I really do believe that chunks of people are like, oh, wait a minute. This is all a big lie. All these people are lying. And so then the result is the country becomes a little bit more sane slowly but slowly but slowly is the whole situation horrible yes it is but is there something sort of good about the fact that people are sort of kind of coming to their senses and realizing oh my goodness these people really are lying about everything i think that is a good thing you know it can't go on forever i i, I have faith that the american people are far smarter than the stupid media thinks they are yeah you know, the one positive I did take away from the case is probably what you took from it. The jury looked at the facts and did the right thing. So at least the justice system in this country is not totally dead. Yeah, but think about that, Andy. Why is it not totally corrupt? You know, it's not because the people who are hired and paid to protect the justice system, it's not because they're upright and honest. 
they lied about stuff. They tried to force this guy into a guilty conviction. The only reason, the only thing that protects our system of justice, 12 ordinary citizens sitting on a jury, 12 ordinary people who, you know, I don't know this for a fact, but I would bet you $100 that not a single one of them went to law school just because lawyers are always, <laughs> neither side ever wants a lawyer on the jury. And not a single one of them was a journalist because journalists are always kicked from juries for on both sides. It was just 12 ordinary citizens. And that's what has always made America the country it is. That's who the founders cared about and empowered when they created our country. They're the people who are going to save this country. It's not the people. It's not all the experts. It's not all the people who are the face of these institutions. We see this more clearly in the Rittenhouse trial than anything else. I think the judge did a very good job in sort of allowing fairness to prevail. Learn about the first lawyers that Kyle Rittenhouse had. They're, they're the most corrupt people. It's, it's unbelievable what these people tried to do to him, trying to make money off of his case and trying to, you know, giving him bad advice. It's very corrupt. The only answer are the American people. Yeah. You know, I watched the interview with Tucker Carlson. And, uh, Wasn't that amazing? I got to tell you something. This kid's smart. And, you know, yeah. he, I think he wants to take up a career in law. Maybe he'll do it the right way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, before that, you know, he said that he, he had always wanted to be a nurse. And, of course, you know, to, you know, he was mercilessly ridiculed by the media because he was, you know, doing his first aid stuff. Um, and and, it, and it, it's just another example of where the media that you and I have been around, our, you know, our entire adult lives. And so we're sort of used to it. But but it's good to be reminded every now and then just how completely out of touch these people are, you know, because, you know, they think he's this Yahoo because he wants to be a firefighter and he wants the only firefighters my town has. The only EMTs my town has are volunteers. They don't get paid for it. Yep. They're volunteers and they're volunteers made up of people like Kyle Rittenhouse. And, you know, do, do they want to. You know, do they find excitement in running to the scene of an accident? Sure they do. Of course they do. That's the definition of a firefighter or an EMT. Do they save lives every day? You bet your tail they do. A house on fire would not ever get put out in my county if it weren't for all the volunteer fire departments that are populated by people like Kyle Rittenhouse. Every elderly person who has a heart attack and needs assistance emergency assistance, not a single one of them would have their lives saved if not for people like Kyle Rittenhouse. And what is the thanks he gets? He's called a white supremacist by the president of the United States. And he is mocked and ridiculed by everybody in the media as this terrible yahoo who wants to protect his community. These people are sick. They're sick, sick, sick. You know, I, I think cases like this remind everybody of that. Yep, you're right. Folks, it's called Kyle Rittenhouse Defended Himself Against Lawless Vigilantes. This is by Charles Hurt. It's in the Washington Times right now. Charlie, thank you very much. Appreciate it. God bless you, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thanks for listening to Politically Unstable with Charlie Hurt. Remember, you can read all of Charlie's columns at WashingtonTimes.com. I'm Andy Parks. Have a great day.